when I pulled the body out of the woods, the original one, what was left to it, the person I bought it from, their father had parked it there in 1970, and it sat there for a little over 50 years now when I got it. All right, guys, I got a real treat for you today. Remember that guy Hunter that I've had on the channel before? He builds out those really cool camper van creations. Well, today he's gonna give us a tour of his own personal creation. Hello, Hunter. It's great to be back. Today I'm gonna show you my own personal creation, my camper van. The inspiration was it that I wanted a retro camper on a new style frame with a newer motor and all the amenities of a new vehicle in the original chassis. Starting off on the body, I found a 1953 Grumman curbside restored the whole exterior. When I originally found it, the body was left in a bog for about 50 years and the guide said it was parked in 1970 so it didn't have any glass, any floors, no frame. So I went through, I built a complete tube chassis for this van for this specific wheelbase of 10 foot. Then in the front, I designed it around an E350 suspension in the front and rear with the dualies and a 7.3 power stroke diesel. On the original skin, I had to replace all the glass, all the door seals, most of the roof and do a lot of body work on the original aluminum panels from 1953. In the front here, when I designed this frame, I designed it to support this 18K winch in the front. So that way, even though I don't have four wheel drive, I have mud terrain tires and I can still get unstuck from just about any situation. You can see in the front, I replaced all the lights with brand new LEDs all the way around the van. So everything's been updated. So going down here, I have all six tires with the Oklahoma Geolander mud terrain tires on 16 inch alloys. Following around here, on the outside for the utility axis, I used a 30 amp smart plug, which has a multi-locking point system that's meant more for the marine world. Underneath of it is my quick connect water fill and the vent for the tanks underneath. On this side, I have a 20 gallon gray water tank. And then following back farther, I have the air conditioner vents and the Webasto heater. On this tube chassis, I needed to accommodate the original 10 foot wheelbase of the original body of the van. So I built the frame around it, shortened the stock drive shaft. That way it could fit the Dana 80 rear end to allow for the amount of weight this van has. It has a rear tailgate, which has hydraulic fold ups on it. So it can fold up out of the way and can support an ATV or any dirt bikes on top of it while still towing a boat. All of the woodwork on the outside is mahogany, mahogany decking going all the way up through. And if you jump up here, I have a ladder, outdoor water spigot, with hot and cold valve. And then on top, I have 1100 watts of solar up there across the whole roof. And I built the whole roof rack and everything out of 8020, 15 series. On top of the whole van after restoring it, I did multiple coats of Raptor liner and 3M5200 to seal all the roof penetrations and all the aluminum panels that are original to the body. The back doors have two windows that open and close with screens. And then jumping down to this side, I have multiple seven-way connectors on this. So regardless of how you're towing, you always have lighting options. Underneath this side here, I managed to fit two 20-gallon freshwater tanks. So it's split right here for the main, and this one's for the auxiliary. Now the limitations of cab over design and a 7.3 liter diesel, it is kind of a tight fit up in here, but I was able to fit all the original power steering that was original to the donor vehicle and I was able to fit Cadillac CTS leather seven-way adjustable seats up front for comfort. Everything on the van is power boosted brakes, so it drives and brakes like a brand new van. Now jumping around to this side to the interior. All of the interior of this van was restored. It was all steel, so I replaced everything with aluminum. All of the interior panels are all mahogany which I milled from rough cut material, along with the ceiling, which I actually milled on my own sawmill, old Ambrosa maple. It has overhead compartment, so that way I could store the audio equipment and all of the future relays for light bars. It has quick snap tabs here for my curtains to shut off the whole front of the van. And up here, it has a 10 inch touchscreen display. So moving back from the cab, when you follow through, I was able to fit a three foot by 26 inch shower basin where I can actually store my toilet. All of the curtains here are magnetic. I have a rain, rain head shower, diverter valve with a handheld sprayer. 
And then going down, this shower pan is built into the floor. I did a similar thing with this fan where it has two and a half inches of poly ISO in the floor and the ceiling. So I was able to recess the shower pan down below. So it's a seamless transition from the shower to the main walk area. Now going back with all these cabinets, I did the same thing and milled all the rough cut. The doors are all mahogany and maple and I did quarter sawn inlay bow ties throughout everything along with brass ball catches and power struts. All of the wall panels are all half inch plywood and they're covered with some umbrella marine outdoor upholstery for durability. Coming back down here, I have a couch that folds down into a bed. I did all the upholstery in here, it's all marine vinyl and did all the diamond stitching. Down below, this whole couch area is all the electrical for the van. In front here, I used an EG4 12 volt system. It goes into all the panel displays here. All the solar MPPT, everything is behind there. And then going down, it just gives you access to the rest of the electrical, the sensor leads. And in this one, I used a Renogy inverter. Now this whole box has a ventilation shaft from here all the way up through using four Noctura fans up through the back behind the couch for ventilation. All of the drawers down here all have marine vinyl bottoms and soft close slides on. Now built into this bed, the Webasto heater has two vents here and underneath I'll show you later, there's a duct chase for all the ventilation. So showing back here, as I mentioned before, all the electronics aside from the inverter are Victron. So I used a Touch 70 and integrated the Servo GX to also control all my water valves for the fresh water inlet. And I have all my touch lights right there with the dimmers. This is actually the exhaust fan right here where it goes up behind to circulate the air. These fold back and they also have snap tabs here to hold them in the case of going off-road when things are jostling around. Up here, I have a little galley kitchen. It has all of the extra material I had from building the van. I ended up building a butcher block out of it and crafting this countertop. It has a hand hammered copper sink with hot and cold water. Underneath here, I have a small dorm fridge, pull out drawers, and flip down storage area below. Then, inside of here, I was able to fit a four gallon hot water heater and all of my valve controls and all the valves are accessible there in case you need any maintenance or shut any valves off while winterizing. Up above here is just a tilt out tray for sponges. Then up above, I'm putting a microwave here. The microwave I wanted to go with, which was a retro style one, was back ordered along with the fridge I'd planned before. All of this has storage up here too. And then the two panels in the back are actually covers for the speakers. Now down below, I used all marine vinyl in here for durability for the same purpose with this one here always being muddy. And I have airline tracks here with quick connect tabs. So if I want to put anything back here like a bike, anything that I wouldn't want to leave in the back of the parking lot, I can mount it in here and strap it down. I have access doors back here, just as a utility chase for fire extinguishers and extra parts. These all fold out too for more storage. Along with this side, with a full depth drawer. Now, I was able to fit an air conditioner in here. I had limitations with the rooftop units with the solar panels being in the way, and I didn't want to do an undermount unit because of dirt and other debris hitting it. I utilized a high efficiency window unit because I have enough solar that it can run indefinitely during the day and enough storage power to last all night. Before I show you how the beds work, let me just show you inside of here with the electrical compartment. So, so underneath of here, these fold out. I was able to fit the diesel heater through this duct system that goes around the whole couch. And right here, I was able to fit all of my Victron components 
I have a 60 amp DC to DC is just a backup charger directly to the alternator. I have an MPT 15070 through Victron there, their distribution system, and their BMS monitoring. Now, I can show you how this couch works to fold out to a bed. As you can see without the bed here, these slide out. So that way, when this couch is on here, you can pull them all the way out. I have a fitted sheet that goes over this and it leaves you with a twin size memory foam mattress in the front. And then in the back, what I have here is a split Murphy style bed. If you wanted to fit a second person in here, while camping, these fold down, this side folds down, and then these cushions go on both sides, and they fit really tight in there, that way you limit the amount of feeling you have on the seams, but it shows when this one goes here, that goes all the way down, and that one goes there, you're left with another single size bed that's six foot two wide. So I just wanted to highlight the water system in here. It's actually integrated with the Victron Servo GX with the relays. So underneath of here, I have all of my manifolds to easy access. And these water valves work in a way where when I connect my Quick Connect outdoor fitting, it will automatically sense that any tank is low, select that tank, fill it, and then go to city water directly connected. And then the reverse when you're utilizing the water, so you don't have to swap valves on tanks or anything, it'll just go from main tank to auxiliary tank back to city water and shut down. So just in case you guys are curious, I've been working on this now for about two years from the time I started building the whole tube chassis for the body and restoring the body. It's been a nights and weekend project now, nonstop since then, and finally can have it on the road to enjoy it. If you're curious about some pictures before, I actually have some in here. When I pulled the body out of the woods, the original one, what was left to it? The person I bought it from, once I pulled it out, they said, their father parked it there in 1970, and it sat there for a little over 50 years now when I got it. It took a couple days of digging and moving trees and using a tractor to actually get it out of the embankment it was at to have my buddy tow it home. Well, Hunter, I really appreciate you showing us this. I heard about it a lot for the last two years. Paul's been talking about it. And... This was a, a project you did on your spare time because you also built like a half a dozen really cool camper vans. That's, that's what we, it's been. We had a few of them on the channel before and you do amazing work. Your attention to detail is top notch and this thing really knocks it out of the park. This is a one-off, one-of-a-kind and I appreciate you driving it down today to give us a tour. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us.